The Guy Ritchie film The Gentleman gets a Netflix spin-off series, and just a few weeks ago it was announced this is coming back for a season two as well. Let's talk about Netflix's The Gentleman. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my TV review for The Gentleman. Season one of this is streaming right now on Netflix. This is based on a Guy Ritchie film which starred uh, Matthew McConaughey, Hugh Grant, uh, among some of the other Guy Ritchie mainstays. But as far as I can tell, uh, none of the people from that film carried over into this series. It's more of a uh, like inspired by kind of a spinoff. Um, so we, we get sort of the, the universe, but not quite, uh, you know, the, the same through line really uh, to that uh, movie. But anyway, if, if you missed that movie, um, it came out right before the pandemic. It came out January of 2020. Uh, and so as a result, became one of the biggest movies at the box office that year because, uh, you know, they only ran movies for a couple of months before the world shut down. So uh, I guess uh, it was strong enough that uh, Guy Ritchie and uh, some of his his uh, co-writers and whatever said, you know, let's let's kind of turn this into a series. Um, and so Guy Ritchie actually directed um, the first two episodes uh, of this series. And I think, did he co-write them as well? Um, yes, he co-wrote them uh, with his partner, Matthew Reed, uh, but he directed those first two episodes. Um, and then after that, uh, just sort of different people uh, directed. But anyway, before we launch any further into the specifics of the show, let me welcome you back to Dan Reviews It. If you're one of my subscribers already, thank you so much. Always love having you return to the channel. If you're not one of my subscribers, please consider uh, hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get alerts for all my new video drops. Or you could just like this video, comment below. All that stuff, of course, helps the channel out as well. So like I mentioned, this already has been renewed for season two. Um, so we can look forward to that maybe in 2025. But uh, right now we have the eight episodes up for season one. One, this is all about uh, Theo James is the star of this, and he plays uh, Eddie uh, Horniman, uh, who has unexpectedly inherited um, a huge estate, 15,000 acres worth, um, and the title of Duke at the reading of his uh, deceased father, and uh, learns in, in pretty short order that the land actually... Um, is part of a weed-growing empire uh, run by Susie Glass, who is played by uh, Kaya uh, Scoldario. Um, and so he has to sort of contend with all of these uh, dangerous people with, uh, you know, different agendas while trying to keep uh, his home and himself alive. Uh, and it's sort of interesting, the trajectory of these uh, two lead actors. There's a lot of other people in this as well, um, including Jolie Richardson, Vinnie Jones, Edward Fox, Giancarlo Esposito. We know him from many, many things. Um, and Daniel Eings. Um, but Theo James and Kaya uh, Scaldario both started off in young adult adaptations and then moved into um, action video game action uh, franchise movies. Uh, you had Theo James who did the Divergent series and then he was part of um, the Res or the Underworld uh, movies, a couple of those recent ones. And then uh, Kaya Scaldario started out in um, the Maze Runner series and then moved on to um, the Resident Evil uh, franchise. I think she was in just, just the most recent one of that. So kind of interesting, you know, that they're both sort of meeting here. I think this is their first time working together, but sort of similar uh, trajectories here. So I looked back at my grades for the film, The Gentleman, uh, which I gave a B minus. And uh, I will say Guy Ritchie um, is definitely a little bit hit or miss with me. Um, he has his own style. Uh, it, it does not seem to change that much. So for me, it's more a matter of does the material sort of fit what he's going for? He had a, a really decent movie earlier this year that I, I think I gave a B to somewhere in that range um, called The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Um, I think Hugh Grant was in that one too, but um, but that was in theaters briefly. And um, I, I liked it. I thought the material lent itself to uh, what he's trying to do. And it doesn't always work that way for me with Guy Ritchie. I, I'm definitely not like a, a, a diehard uh, fan of his. I think uh, some of his movies work and some of them don't. Uh, the Gentleman, I think, worked well enough, obviously, uh, because I gave it a B minus. So just sort of skating by on that grade. Here is my issue, though, with the series version. And the first two episodes directed by him um, have a very similar feel to, uh, you know, the, the Guy Ritchie experience, we can say. But in subsequent episodes, 
because they're directed by different people, they um, are, are trying sort of certainly to imitate that style. But uh, the issue is, I'm not sure that Guy Ritchie's style lends itself to long form storytelling. Um, you know, his movies are in the two hour range, you know, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. But here we have eight, nearly one hour episodes. It's probably about seven and a half hours total of runtime. And because of that, a lot of things sort of get bogged down with uh, throwing too many subplots in there that don't really go anywhere um, or just, OK, let's throw an action sequence here just for the hell of it, because we want to sort of imitate that style uh, that the film had and that all the Guy Ritchie projects have. And so when Guy Ritchie's at the helm in these first two episodes and we're establishing the world and all of that, establishing the characters, it is uh, fast paced and frenetic, and I think the kind of thing we've come to expect from Guy Ritchie. But after that, when we're um, sort of in more of the let's get to know the characters, let's get to know this world a little better, um, it definitely seems to drag a little bit. And then every so often, like I said, there'll be just sort of a, a random action sequence that maybe doesn't even really fit. Just like, okay, it feels like there should be an action sequence here because there's been more dialogue for the last you know, eight or nine minutes, let's throw some action in, whether it fits the narrative or not. Um, but I will say, it is an enjoyable ride, um, and I think Theo James is is pretty good in the lead role. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, look, I love him in uh, so many of the things he's famous for, including the Breaking Bad uh, franchise, but he is playing a very, very similar character here to uh, ones that we have seen him play numerous times before. I would love to see him. Not that I'm saying let's put him in a sitcom or something, but, um, you know, it's it's just very, very uh, familiar ground for Esposito. Um, I, I, I would love to see him just uh, spreading out his wings a little bit more, uh, you know, or, or maybe they could have had someone else portray that role. I, I can't remember if he's like a Guy Ritchie regular or not. Um, I don't know if he's... I, I don't know if I've even seen all the Guy Ritchie movies, to be honest, but I've seen at least... Most of them, I think. But uh, anyway, this is about on par for me with the movie. But I do have to, you know, knock it down a little bit just because I think it drags in too many places and is a little bit, um, you know, let's let's try to imitate the Guy Ritchie style. But in long form, it just doesn't work quite as well. So I will leave this with a C plus. Uh, I think it's good enough. Like that's, you know, that's about the highest grade I can give it. Um, but the movie slightly better, but again, not Richie's best either. Um, so no clue why they decided to spin that particular world off, uh, especially since this doesn't really seem to have anything to do with the movie. But in any case, we will be getting a season two of this. Uh, so we'll look for that in the future. But for now, uh, this is up on Netflix with the first eight episodes. All right. Thank you for watching Dan Reviews It, and I'll see you next time.